So what we're going to do, since you guys were so cool, we're going to kind of turn this into a drinking game. So Digi has, has brought some, uh, some booze with him. We're going to kind of pass some of it out as much as we can. Every time I say the word um, you have to drink. And I say um a lot. <laughs> do you want to just like pass them around? But you can just, alcohol kills all the germs, so, if, so whoever has it, you just keep passing. Whoever has it, when I say um, you have to drink. <laughs> this is your official invitation to Toastmasters. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Actually, I, I'll get with you later because I am interested in that. So my name is, is Tyler Cohen. Uh, this presentation is Look What My Car Can Do. Um, I want to give a special thanks to Ben, Joel, Mark, Rob, Peter, Zach, Matt, Kate, Maddie, and Charles. Now, some of these people know that they help me. Some of these people do not. <laughs> so <clears throat> you'd be kind of surprised at uh, how many people I asked if I could rip apart their cars, and they said no. Like, it's for science, come on. So we had to come up with creative ways to get access to these cars. Uh, this car that I'm standing in front of is a Ford Fusion 2011. And in one of the photographs, there's a little hint from where that car came from. If any of you guys can see the hint, pick up on it and say where that car came from, Zach over here will buy you a beer. So just call it out when you see it. But it's in one of the photos. All right, so this is a disclaimer. Um, yes, I work for the Department of Defense. Um, this presentation reflects my own views and not any of those of my employer. Um, anything that I show in here or talk about potential things that you can do, I take no responsibility if you happen to void your warranties. Um, I also, unfortunately, had to tailor my presentation at the last minute. Um, I didn't want to get fired or sued by Ford. So there are things that I'm not going to be able to say, but I can hint to them. <clears throat> so I'm going to give you an overview, just a quick introduction. We're going to talk about the technology, avenues of exploitation, uh, resources, and then the future. <clears throat> so also, I am a, um, in, I've, I've had about, 10 years of experience doing digital forensics. Um, I've worked for the Department of Defense Cybercrime Center, um, IBM, NASA. Everyone's like, what, you did forensics for NASA? What, were you like going after people from Uranus or something? Ha! Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I think that was funny. It never gets old either. <clears throat> but so that's what this presentation is going to be geared toward. It's going to be geared toward a forensic analyst um, and what they can get from these cars, but also as a user, you have to understand that there's information that you're putting out there on these cars that is giving away stuff about you. So cars are not just for transportation anymore. Um, they are now becoming entertainment centers, uh, communication hubs. Uh, these vehicle systems now store and stream digital content, and they're used as communication mediums. So it's not like the old days where your car was just your car. This is now, you know, in today's, today's world, people want to be connected to their social networks. They want to be able to find everything. They want access at their fingertips. And they should. I do too. <clears throat> um, so manufacturers are coming up with really innovative ways to market and sell vehicles. Um, em emphasis has been on technology, uh, integration, and safety. And Ford has been leading the way since 2007 with the inclusion of the Microsoft Sync system in its vehicles. So I kind of look at Ford as what Apple did, how Apple reinvented the digital uh, music players. Ford is paving the way for cars. So their, their systems are much more advanced than any of the other systems. So what are the designers thinking when they're designing these cars? Obviously, they're concerned about safety, um, but aside from safety, 
Ford is really, really, really concerned with digital rights management. Now, since they're using the Microsoft OS, we know that it's Microsoft DRM technology. Now, I bet you there's some of you in the audience who are experts at uh, DRM vulnerabilities and cracking and know a bunch of research that applies to that. But basically what I'm saying is that the Microsoft DRM is vulnerable in ways, in, in any way that Microsoft DRM would be vulnerable, it's vulnerable in this capacity too because it's using the same technology. Um, designers are also thinking about connectivity, user to user, and car to car. Ease of use, you just want your stuff to work and reliability. So what do I mean by connectivity? <clears throat> Cars are really concerned with users connecting to their user stuff. Uh, your gadgets and their functions are being integrated into your driving experience. So <clears throat> I want my content and I want it now. I want all my music that's stored in the cloud and I want to be able to access it wherever I am. Um, I want to be able to connect my phone and have it stream all of my information. I want to be able to use voice, voice dialing. I want it all just there. I want it to be easy. Um, and then you also want to have, uh, be connected to your user environment. Um, you want to have your social applications available to you and you want your car to do it. Um, my car, why shouldn't it give me the cheapest price of gas? Why shouldn't it tell me happy hour specials? My, uh, my brother Zach over here, he likes using uh, social applications to look for hot chicks and dudes. He, he puts it up, the augmented reality, and he's, he, can see, he can see how far away a, a hot chick is from him and he can chat with her. He can say, yeah, I'm going to check in and I'm going to check in with you and let's meet up. Why can't your car do that for you? Ease of use, your stuff should just work. I mean, most of us are pretty lazy. We just want our stuff to work. We buy it, we spend a lot of money. There shouldn't be any issues. So the, the car companies are moving toward um, driving, not interfering with your social life, and things just working. That means more automation, more integration, and more inter interoperability. That's a tough word. Well, what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So what does that mean for us? Well. The more automation, what is that? That means the more vulnerabilities and more vectors of attack. So these are things that I want us to just kind of be keeping in our minds. Reliability again, things should just work. There have been some complaints with the Ford systems uh, that I've been reading on the forums and then from people who actually have these cars. Uh, there's complaints that the car enter entertainment system reboots while driving, which is kind of a problem. <laughs> Actually, not all of it, as, as you're going to see in a second. Not all of it is. Um, changing songs shouldn't take 15 seconds, and stored data should be accurate. I know that you guys are all familiar with that story. I don't know if it's a true story or not, but a woman had her, was using her GPS, her GPS data, and it essentially told her to drive off a cliff, so she did, and she died. I don't know if that's true or not, but... Basically, you want your data to be accurate, so stuff like that doesn't happen. All right, so what are users thinking? They're thinking we want safety, again, ease of use, and connectivity. <clears throat> Something that they should be thinking about is confidenti confidentiality of their data. There's a lot of data that I'm going to show you is actually stored on these devices. Um, they need to be thinking of you know, a friend could come into their car and, and get their data if they have devices set up for that. Uh, these devices have remote access now. They have uh, wireless on them. There's Bluetooth. Um, or a forensic analyst, you know, could come and, and take, get your data. So they really need to be cognizant of what's being put on there. So, you know, if there's photographs or things on there that you don't want to be found, just, just don't put them on there. I mean, simple as that. Um, what are hackers thinking? Well, what do hackers do? They make something do what it's not meant to do. So some things that have actually happened, some things that are going to be happening probably in the future. Um, controlling the car remotely. 
So using the, the, the wireless, the, the communication system is connected and that's been proven, I believe, at this conference and then there was a study, a school study where they dealt with the tire pressure. It's been proven that these communication systems are connected to the car's onboard computer. So it is very possible to get a piece of malware, get it in through the communication system on the car and then control the car. Uh, you can stop it, start it, re really whatever you want to do. Um, so hackers and hackers, good hackers, uh, black, white hackers, they're both thinking about protecting or stealing personal data. So again, there's a lot of data that you have on this device. You really have to think of these devices like a computer. Anything you wouldn't want to put on your computer, you don't want to put on your car. <clears throat> uh, side channel comms. These cars can be used as communication devices when speaking to other cars. And I'm going to show you at the end of this pro presentation the IntelliDrive, which is coming out in about five years. And cars are broadcasting Wi-Fi uh, coordinates. And essentially, you can use this for communication. You can use the Bluetooth for communication. You can use uh, the wireless for communication. And you can do these in such a way that your traffic is not necessarily going to be intercepted. And I'll let you guys kind of ponder, ponder that one. Um, use these cars as peer-to-peer -peer devices. Share your music, share your content. Um, surveillance, I can get something in the car so that I can monitor the car, I can see where it's been. Um, there's, um, so that surveillance, or again, you know, just using it like, like Zach's gonna do to just find hot chicks. Uh, it can also be used, these vehicles, for propagating viruses and malware. So my vehicle, get it vehicle for propagation because it's a vehicle. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> so you can use this car, and this car can actually be a virus that is infecting other cars as I drive past it. These are just potential things for the future, but not that far off in the future. Um, and then forensics, which is, which is where, where I kind of come into this. And that's where the rest of this presentation is going to kind of go. Oh, and if anyone has any questions, please just, just jump in. Um. <laughs> so, so what is stored? What are stored on these devices? Now, these systems can store navigation data, where you've been, where you're going, uh, can save track data, save locations, previous destinations, which is a good thing too, because you, you kind of have to, you, you have to find that mix between privacy and then usability. I personally like it saving my data because then that way I don't have to type it in, because I never remember addresses and it's just already there. Um, Phone-related information, when you pair your phone up, um, it's going to save the Bluetooth Mac ID, pretty much most of the information on the phone. Your contacts, call logs, SMS messages, call history, uh, saved numbers, that's going to be maintained. So, hint, if you, got, if you rent a car from like Enterprise, Hertz or whatever, and you pair up your phone, just make sure you delete the profile. It's not going to be completely gone, but at least It'll make it a lot harder for someone to, to get your data. Uh, music files, <clears throat> image files. Uh, the, the Ford Sync uh, Generation 1, you can put 32 files, uh, 32 photos on, on, the, on the car. 